What is up my dudes? This is the Drawing Dragon and today I'm going to be answering your questions about the meaning of life and our purpose in the universe. No, not really. I'm probably mostly going to talk about art stuff and the Stanley Parable stuff in this, our 1000 sub Q&A video. Thank you all so much for your support and for your questions. I'm gonna shut up and, and, and let's do it. So, for the question everyone in the whole universe has been asking, how did I get into the Stanley Parable? Okay, maybe not everyone in the whole universe, but at least three people, Green Bird, Cher Evans, and Crystal Space Kitty. So, I first started watching Let's Players on YouTube a few years ago, and I wasn't really watching recent stuff. Basically, if I found a Let's Player that I liked, I would go back and watch all their old stuff. And that was how I actually found the Stanley Parable for the first time, was through those old Let's Plays. Occasionally, I would find a game that I just really liked seeing the reactions to, and Stanley Parable was definitely one of those. I was a few years late to the party, like I am with most of my interests, but honestly, the game just intrigued me, so I began watching other Let's Players play it. So, funny enough, I actually thought the game was really, really scary. It, it still kind of is, if I think about it hard enough. But at the time, I was a little bit younger, and I was dealing with some pretty bad anxiety already. And I was basically just a very skittish person, and Stanley Parable was about as close to an actual horror game as I could get. It actually, it actually did give me nightmares for quite a while, and I kept coming back to it, even though it was scary. It was, like, interesting enough for me to want to get through the scary. So even though I found it really interesting, and I did like to watch other people play it, my sister loved it. She doesn't usually obsess over things like I do. That's not really something she does. So it was really kind of funny watching her get so interested in this random game that neither of us had even played. We were watching a lot of the same YouTubers at the time, so it kind of makes sense that we would both run into it eventually. So basically, that was kind of her thing for a while, and I did like it, but I liked it very casually. It wasn't really a hyperfixation of mine, it was just something that I was like, Oh, okay, that's pretty neat, and I liked seeing other people play it. Well, skipping ahead a few years later, I remember one day my sister came to me practically bouncing, and she held her phone out. Ultra Deluxe had just been announced, and she was so excited that something she loved that really didn't have any reason to be remastered or updated, was getting touched on again. It was getting new endings. I mean, this game had been out years, and it's not really the kind of game that, you know, you expect to get DLCs or sequels or things like that. It was really exciting. So when Ultra Deluxe finally came out, even though we weren't watching videos together, we weren't watching them at the same time, we did end up watching a lot of the same Let's Plays, and we talked about them a lot. So, for context, my sister's pretty quiet. We don't have too many interests that we share. We get along just fine. We're just very different personalities. We're into very different things. So, I think part of what intrigued me about Stanley Parable, especially the second time around, is I just really enjoyed having someone to talk to about something I liked. So it wasn't until Ultra Deluxe that Stanley Parable became this big hyper fixation for me, something like Undertale. I actually think I obsessed over it so much, I kind of ruined it for her. I feel a little bit bad about that. I actually did not expect the channel to become so heavily Stanley Parable themed, because that was a relatively new fascination of mine. Honestly, it was really just chance that I happened to upload my first video while I was focused on the Stanley Parable, and since Ultra Deluxe had just come out, I guess the algorithm picked my stuff up. And you know, because of that, a bunch of the fans on my channel, like, I'd even wager most of them, most of you guys, are Stanley Parable fans, so I kept making Stanley Parable videos. And that's not to say that I don't love it, I really do, it really is a hyper fixation for me right now. It's just kind of funny, because 
that was such a new thing. It's just funny how that worked out. So moving on, we have a few more questions from Crystal Space Kitty. What are your Stanley and narrator's ages? That's actually a tricky one. Mostly because I consider both of them to basically be these immortal AI type beings, not really human. Stanley's a little easier. I always thought of him being like late 20s, maybe 28 or something. I don't know. I just, especially the way I draw him, he looks like this. He's a, he's a man child. He's a goofball. I really can't see him being 30 or older, even though, not gonna lie, that's probably closer to the canon age. Narrator's really tricky because I just wanted to capture him as this sort of ageless being while also being definitely older than Stanley. And that's kind of paradoxical. But you know, in the game, he kind of gives off disgruntled old man vibes. What's your opinion on narrator wearing a dress? Honestly, I can't even really picture that. I think he's just so... I think he's just too stuffy, traditional, serious to even, you know, consider it. He likes his pointy shoulder suits too much. plan to make Stanley and narrator go through angst in the future. So I'm not sure I 100% understand the question. I'm assuming you just mean like more serious stuff, less meme-ish stuff. And yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm actually surprised I've gone this long without posting anything remotely angsty since I actually draw that quite a bit. <laughs> I it gets kind of 50-50 between random silly doodles and very serious edgelord stuff. On the channel, the meme stuff's just much easier. I don't have to worry about the audio. I already have a clear idea of how the video's going to go because of the meme template. So yeah, we can we can get some angsty edgelord stuff in the future. It won't be at the expense of memes. There will still definitely be memes. I just kind of got to figure out the template. Like, do you do comics? Do you do animation memes? No, you don't because I can't animate. Never mind. How do you edit your videos? So I literally just use CapCut, that, that's it. I screen record the audio I want, usually off YouTube, and then I slap it into CapCut. It's really good, it's free, it's very simple, click and drag, and it's perfect for the amount of stuff I want to do. Oh yeah, side note, like the comment here mentions, Sadist has a new Stanley Parable, very, very loosely inspired by the Stanley Parable animation. It's really cool. Go watch it. They're making their own series out of it. It's neat. Next, we have a question from who I can only assume is the narrator himself. Opinion on the Stanley Parable fandom. Honestly, I hadn't really interacted with online fandoms at all until this year, so I probably have a very limited perspective. But yeah, from what I've seen, the Stanley Parable fans have, are really chill. Super chill. They, they kind of remind me of the game itself. Very funny, very jokey. There's like morbid, morbid humor, morbid undertones, but very lighthearted, very wholesome stuff. You want a toxic fandom though? Believe it or not, Pokemon. I've never met a mean Pokemon fan in real life, but online, like just as a group, the Pokemon fans, they'll like slit your throat. It's crazy. It's it's so weird. Like, you've got Stanley Parable over here, like pseudo horror, psychological horror, and it's got the chillest fans ever. And you got a creature collector RPG aimed at literal children, and the fans, they're they're ruthless. It's terrifying. It's the weirdest thing. Next question is from Malzi Moo. Is the broom closet ending your favorite? I find this question concerning. Moving on to Anthony Winchester, does the narrator know of his simps? And how would he react if the fangirls, boys, and non-binary crazy people broke into the parable and surrounded him? Okay, so honestly, I'm gonna assume someone as debonair and chronically online as the narrator. He's seen the fan art, he knows he's fine. He knows the people simp for him. 
How he'd respond to them breaking into the parable and surrounding him, though, I don't know. That would probably fluster him at least a little bit. Just because it's just been him and Stanley for years, that might be a little freaky. But, you know, I think he'd get used to it real quick. He'd, he'd probably love that. He'd be drinking it up. Next up, we have a question from Jade the Slime. Favorite and least favorite ending in the Stanley parable? The broom closet ending is my favorite. Okay, for real though. My favorite Stanley Parable ending ever is actually the countdown ending. It's not because I'm trying to be like edgy or anything like that. But from a story standpoint, it's so effective. It's so well done. Probably my favorite thing about, well, entertainment generally, but especially video games. I really love the storytelling. And that's something that the countdown ending does probably the best out of any any ending in the game. The setup, the music, the script, the voice acting, my boy Kevin Brighting, it's all top notch. And the concept of a game that you should be able to win, but you literally can't, it's done so well and it really sums up, I think, the nature of the game just generally. Like, from a storytelling script perspective, it just feels the most effective. Like, I know exactly the message that the game is trying to convey in this ending, and it does it really well. Now, I don't have any endings I particularly dislike. Like, I don't think any of them are bad or poorly done. But probably the closest I come to actually disliking an ending is the museum ending, but specifically the version with the bucket. I have really mixed feelings about it. It's kind of a love-hate thing because on the one hand, it is freaking hilarious. It is a really funny ending. The part I don't like is it kind of like cheapens the curator, I guess, as a character. We literally only heard from her one time before Ultra Deluxe and she sort of is this otherworldly, mysterious being. She seems so wise and above it all, and then the Ultra Deluxe version of the ending kind of makes her the butt of the joke. It is really funny, but in my opinion, it just kind of, it kind of takes the edge off this otherwise super serene and mysterious character. Like, she felt like she was even more powerful and wise than the narrator, and then this version is just like, crazy bucket lady. And I don't... I don't dislike it. It is really funny, and I understand that that's why it's funny, is because she's a serious character. But, you know, like I was saying, from a storytelling standpoint, it kind of thro threw me for a loop. You know, unless the bucket is actually more than a meme. Maybe it is, canonically, a super-powered force of destruction. I don't- I don't know. In that case- in that case, she's- she's still acting within her character. Next, we have quite a few fun questions from Snicker, starting with, what got you interested in Dragon? So, to be perfectly honest, I can't even remember. When I was little, I was obsessed with dinosaurs. You know, a lot of kids are. And I guess that somehow evolved into dragons over time. You know, give it more horns, wings, it spits fire now. Wow, it's even cooler. Anyway, I love to draw them, I love watching other people draw them, I collect toys and figures of them. When I was a kid, I would pretend to be dragons when I was playing. You know, I guess that was just kind of my earliest hyperfixation, and I never really grew out of it. So this next one's really interesting. What's your interpretation of the narrator, like his in-game personality? So to be totally honest, the way I kind of perceived his character changed very drastically from the original release of the game and the Ultra Deluxe release of the game. And I'll explain why, and it's actually a good thing. It's, it's more like a character development, like he actually changed as a character. I'll explain in a minute. Anyway, my very first impression I got was that he was a quote-unquote antagonist. You know, like he's an evil character. He's got his evil British accent that all the Americans associate with evil for some reason. He always struck me as kind of this sly, devious character. The best way I can think to describe the impression I got was something like a wild animal. You know, I don't mean like crazy off the walls, roaring bear type wild animal. I mean like a wild cat, like a, like a panther or something. Like, he's not hurting you, and he's not doing anything he does 
because he's malicious or evil, but just because that's what he does. Like, you know, like a, a wild cat, it's stalking you in the shadows, it's cunning, it's planning, it's waiting for your downfall. But then if it does catch you and hurt you or kill you, you don't feel mad at it. You don't feel like it's a person doing something evil. You just feel like, oh, well, yeah, well, that's that's what a panther do. It just be like that. And that's kind of the impression I got from the narrator. I never thought of him as human, even from my earliest impression of the game. He always just seemed sort of otherworldly. I keep using that word, but it's true. Like something personable, but not quite human. So I didn't find any malice in it, but I thought he wanted to hurt me. And what's really funny is going back and re-watching, re-watching the old endings through Ultra Deluxe, I don't know where I got that impression. I mean, he's sarcastic and he's cold, but he never gives the impression that he actually wants to hurt Stanley. I mean, if you look at it, if you pay attention, what is the one ending where Stanley doesn't end up dead or hurt or lost? It's the freedom ending. It's the one ending the narrator was trying to get you to in the first place. And realizing that, it kind of brings the game full circle because it's that, it's that really interesting perspective of is it worth making your own choices if your choices are only going to lead to your suffering? Or on the other hand, is it worth obeying someone else if that means you'll be safe and happy? It's really interesting. But anyway, going back to the narrator's character itself, it actually changed immensely through the Ultra Deluxe ending. He seems so much more personable. He's still his snarky, condescending self, but he seems much less cold. Like, he's actually willing to be friends with Stanley. He seems to think they're on the same page. Whereas in the original game, there was kind of this love-hate relationship going on. Ultra Deluxe shows up, and they act like they're buddies. It's the funniest thing. But what's really interesting is, this seems like a natural progression, a natural character growth. It's not like eight years passed and they just forgot how to write the character or anything like that. It feels like Stanley and the narrator have been at it for eight years and at this point he's just used to it. He's just made his peace with things. This is who he is now. He's the king of comedy. He's playing Is This a Bucket with Stanley. He's giving Stanley a bucket. He's giving Stanley a friend. He puts up a whole showcase expo type thing for The Stanley Parable 2. He's a huge dork and it's adorable. I love him. Anyway, I need to move on. I could do a whole video, honestly, just ranting about this. Because the narrator's character is honestly what The Stanley Parable is to me. That's what got me interested, was this character specifically. Anyway, moving on, we have a very important question. Are you a bucket? And the answer, we are all buckets. You only have to expand your mind to see it. Do you have a favorite Undertale or Deltarune character? I do, in fact. In Undertale, hands down, Papyrus. No contest. He's my favorite. I love him. You would be surprised by that. It seems like I haven't drawn him at all, but the truth is, he's really hard to draw. That's the only reason that he hasn't shown up on the channel at all. Now, Deltarune, I don't care about Deltarune nearly as much as I do Undertale, but I would think my favorite character would probably be Lancer. I guess Sweet Cinnamon Boy is just my aesthetic. That's just the character I go for. Kind of keeping with that theme, what's your favorite Undertale and Deltarune song? So I actually really like this one because the Undertale soundtrack has kind of been its own interest for me, even beyond the game itself. It's a really good soundtrack. Again, I'm not that into Deltarune, so I have never really thought about what my favorite song would be. I might actually go with The World Revolving just because it's such an interesting composition. It's a, it's a weird song and it's really cool. Now Undertale... Undertale, I kind of keep flip-flopping between one song and another as my favorite. 
When I first played the game, it was Waterfall. The theme that plays in Waterfall was really the first time I stopped playing the game and was like, Oh wow, oh my goodness, this is so cool! And after that, once I began just listening to the soundtrack on its own, it was Battle Against a True Hero. Which, since I only ever actually play the pacifist route, because I'm a coward, I never got to hear that song in the game, so that might be one of the reasons it was interesting to me, is it was... It was something special. So, I would still probably say Battle Against a True Hero is probably still my favorite song. Recently, for some reason, I have just had this newfound appreciation for Asgore. Asgore's battle theme. I mean, I really loved this song before, but just recently I'm obsessed with it for some reason. So even though my favorite song is still probably Battle Against a True Hero, Asgore's a really, really, really close second. I kind of swap between the two on a day-to-day -day basis. What's your favorite food? So off the top of my head, I don't know my favorite, number one favorite food ever, but I really, really love cheese sticks. Mozzarella sticks, you know, deep fried cheese sticks. Like, if there are any kind of cheese sticks on the menu at a restaurant, I'm getting them. Nobody else wants them as an appetizer. That'll be my meal. I don't care. I'm getting the cheese sticks. Next, we have a question from Nightcore. Have you ever roleplayed as a man named Jim? What are you talking about? I am Jim. Jim. Moving on, the next question was asked by Ian Os- <laughs> I'm gonna butcher all of these names, oh no! Asked by Ratskill, Anisyoshi, and Ian Osaya. All basically asking how I got into art in the first place. So I've basically been drawing pretty much non-stop since the day I could pick up a pen. I think the first time my parents realized it was actually something I was into and I was good at, not just, you know, the scribbling phase every kid goes through. I think I was like three or four years old and I drew a picture of Sandy Cheeks from Spongebob Squarepants for memory. I think that's kind of when my parents tuned in to that interest of mine and really started encouraging it. So it's just something I've always loved doing as long as I could remember. Alright, so we have a few more questions from Ratskill. Any information about this dragon on the profile picture? And uh, nope, not really. He's just a random dragon I doodled as the logo. He didn't even have a name until last week. On my birthday, I kind of threw out a request for name ideas. And really the only person who responded was the user Aquamarie, who suggested Cobalt. And you know, I think it fits. I think it's cute. So that's his name now. But that's really all I know about him. Do you have any other hobbies except drawing in YouTube? So I love video games, even though I suck at most of them. And I love watching video games, watching other people on YouTube play video games. That's actually kind of how I got into YouTube. I also like doing other kinds of art. I like making polymer figures out of clay. I have one video on the channel about that. Hopefully I'll have more in the future because that's a really fun hobby. I also play the piano a little, though I mostly just play Undertale songs. And I also like to casually write from time to time, you know, fan fictions and stuff, though I've never written anything complete enough to justify posting it. And when I say fan fictions, I don't mean I don't mean like the fan service y kind. I mean just, you know, little stories with characters I like from shows and games I like. What is your favorite art that you've made? This one's really hard. I've been thinking about this since I got the question and I still don't have a 100% answer. So I'm gonna say as an art piece that I'm proud of, it's maybe not my favorite thing to look at. Like I've drawn other pieces that I think are better looking, but something I'm really proud of are the 15 AI videos I did here on YouTube. Just because those are some of the biggest projects I've ever worked on. And in a way, they kind of feel like when the channel really took off. So even though they're not technical masterpieces, and I have other drawings that I think turned out better, as a whole, they're very complete and I feel very proud of them. What is your favorite artist? 
So, funny enough, I have no idea. This is another one I thought about long and hard. I have several artists I appreciate, don't get me wrong. Like, I'll see something something they've done pop up and I'll be like, Oh yeah, that, that's the person that drew such and such thing I like. But I don't really keep up with many artists, if that makes sense. So, I'm gonna opt for the cheesy answer. My favorite artist is one of my cousins. She's about my age, so we grew up drawing together, sharing our art with each other. We basically single-handedly encouraged each other to pursue that interest, so there's a lot of sentimentality there. I, ha I probably have more photos of her drawings than of mine. I would show you an example, but I didn't ask for permission. Not sure how she'd feel about it. What is your favorite musician? A similar version of this question was also asked by I Am Tipsy, who asked, What's your favorite artist and band? Okay, so, I do love music. I do. I just have very specific tastes, I guess. I rarely like an artist or even a genre, I just know when I love a particular song, if that makes sense. And I will listen to that song on loop for eternity. I actually listen to things like video game and movie soundtracks more than I do quote-unquote normal music, usually because I have a lot more of a sentimental attachment to them. You know, like there's an emotional connection to something I've heard in my favorite game more than a random song that comes over the radio. Like, I've listened to the Undertale soundtrack an unhealthy amount of times. There's an entire musical with fan lyrics here on YouTube by Man on the Internet, and I swear I have listened to that thing at least weekly for three years straight. As far as actual published artists, really the only two that come to mind are Josh Groban and Celtic Woman. And even then, I don't really keep up with them and their music. I just enjoy most of what I've heard from them. I've also happened to see both of them live in concert, so, you know, that adds a little bit to the sentimentality, too. What is your favorite Stanley Parable soundtrack? So, for this one, I'm gonna go for the Mostly Infinite Hole song. That song had no business going that hard. And the narrator had no business waking Stanley up from the greatest dream ever. And as for the last question, I'm sorry, I really don't have an interesting answer, so I'm going to skip over it. Next, we have a question from I Am Bored who asks, What drawing app or software do you use? Flip a Clip is what I've been using to make the majority of my animatics. But at the time, I was drawing on a Samsung tablet, and it started acting up because it's like 10 years old at this point. So I moved from tablet to PC. And even though I do have Flip a Clip on the PC, it just doesn't work as well for some reason. So I'm trying to move all my art to Clip Art Studio. Clip Art Studio is what I've been using for drawings the last few months, though I've still been animating in Flip a Clip. Now, all of my earlier art, the drawings I did on my Samsung tablet, those were actually done in an app called Ibis Paint. I-B-I-S Paint. I don't know how it's pronounced. It's a free app, very user-friendly, and that's where I learned the basics of graphic art. The next question is from WovenEvening13, who asks, What or who inspired you to do YouTube? There really wasn't a distinct moment where I decided, I want to do YouTube. I just watched so much YouTube that I always kind of assumed I'd upload something someday. I definitely didn't expect it to take off as quickly as it has, and now I'm hoping I can dedicate more time to it, maybe even earn an income from it. As far as a personal inspiration, probably the closest thing I have is the user Probably a Tree, because that was the person who actually showed me how to add sound to a video and upload it to YouTube. Like, I just left a casual comment on someone else's video, basically joking about how I didn't know how to add sound or how to edit, and probably a tree shows up and is like, Bro, I got you. After that random act of kindness, I really didn't have any excuse not to try, and that led me to finding out I actually really enjoy it. Next, we have a couple of questions from Unknown Stardust. Who's your favorite character to draw? That's a tough one. I guess it depends on what my current obsession is. The thing I default to the most is a dragon, you know, hence the channel name. I know that's not really 
a specific character, but if I'm just drawing for the sake of drawing, like in a notebook or something, it's probably going to be a dragon. As far as actual characters, right now, I really love drawing the dreamers, the boss monsters from Undertale. But Sans and Alfie's are really fun to draw too, because Sans is a round boy, and Alfie's scratches my obsessive dragon dinosaur brain itch in a different form. And yeah, huge shocker, Stanley and the narrator are actually not my favorite characters to draw. Not because I dislike them at all, but because humans are really, really hard. So typically if I'm drawing Stanley and the narrator, it's for a video. I rarely draw them just for myself. Do you have any of your own characters? Yeah, I've actually had a ton over the years, but you know, most of them were OCs specifically for the fandom I was into at the time. As far as 100% original characters, I do actually have quite a few from a story I never finished writing as a teenager. I haven't drawn any of them on the channel. In fact, I haven't drawn any of them in years. But they were all from a fantasy setting. Knights, mythical creatures, things like that. So the ones I drew the most were probably Kavanaugh the Knight, Artemis, who was his brother and was like a low-budget firebender, and Tall the Werecat. And me and my cousin also had this Willy Wonka-style character named Norbert, who was just weird. That was his singular personality trait, was that he was weird. I've also had a ton of quote-unquote characters that they don't have names or anything, but they do pop up from time to time when I'm doodling. Kind of like the channel mascot dragon. Like, it's just a dragon that I drew a lot. There's this one little fawn character that I keep drawing. I have no idea why. He doesn't have a name. He doesn't have a personality. It's just a little fawn. Next, we have some questions from Kitty Gamer ATX. Who is your favorite Stanley Parable character? So I know it's the obvious answer, but I'm gonna go with the narrator. I feel like he's the only character in the game with a good, solid personality. I have a very clear fanon personality for Stanley and the curator and the other guys in my head, but it's nothing really concrete. Narrator's the only person that I know who that is in the game. What's your process when creating character designs? Well, when I'm designing a character, the process is just as poorly planned and chaotic as everything else I do. Usually, I'll spend several days scribbling different body shapes, head shapes, eye shapes, hair, and so on until something eventually sticks. Essentially, I'm just mixing and matching and throwing different shapes onto paper until I see something that I'm like, yeah, okay, I like that. And even then, when the design is finished, it still tends to change quite a lot over time. I mean, just look at how different the narrator is now than he was in my original quote-unquote finished sketches. Who's your favorite YouTuber? I watch so much YouTube, I don't know if I really have a favorite YouTuber. I guess it would kind of depend on what genre of video I'm watching. Since I mostly watch stuff about video games, I guess I'm gonna go with Merg and Call Me Kevin. Merg is really wholesome, Kevin is really funny, and they both play video games. If it's specifically a horror game, I do like to watch Super Horror Bro, but since like we've established I am kind of a scaredy cat, I don't watch a whole lot of horror, so if there is a horror game I'm interested in, I'll watch Super Horror Bro. But for the most part, I don't like anything too scary. I also watch a ton of political commentary, cultural commentary, stuff like that, but I won't open that can of worms. What's your favorite TV show slash movie? Uh, it's so hard to narrow it down to just one. I don't watch a whole lot of TV these days. I watch mostly YouTube, not a whole lot of TV. Pretty much everything I do watch is animated, or even aimed at kids. Disney movies are a really big thing in my house. So my favorite Disney movie is Lilo and Stitch. Though I'm also really fond of the Despicable Me and Minion movies. I also really like How to Train Your Dragon. I also really like Rise of the Guardians. As far as TV shows, I really love Spongebob. That's probably the TV show I watch the most. 
Although at this point I have most of the episodes memorized, so I'm not really watching, they're just kind of background noise. And although I haven't watched it in years, for the longest time my favorite show ever was Phineas and Ferb. I just thought it was the funniest thing ever. The next question is from Kiro Blazing, who asks, What's the one animal you would want to have, mythical or in real life? That is a very fun question. Unfortunately, I have a very predictable answer. A dragon, my dude. I really, really like dragons. The channel name didn't come from nowhere. I have fantasized about having a pet dragon since I was like five. Next, we have a couple of questions from E.M. What inspires your art? This is such a poetic, philosophical sounding question, and I don't really have a good answer. I'm not really sure. I've never really thought about it. Best way I can think to explain it is it's just a great way for someone who has an overactive imagination to bring those ideas to life. Basically, I draw because it lets me put my daydreaming into a visual form, something I can share with other people. It's also comforting because it kind of gives me the sense of control. Not in like an obsessive way, but in a way where I'm kind of in charge of what's happening, I know what to expect. It lets me see characters and things that I love doing things I would want to see or would be interested in seeing. This is followed by an even more philosophical question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No, a hot dog is not a sandwich. Do I have a reason for this answer? Do I have some facts and logic to bring to the table? No, I just know in the pit, in the core of my being, a hot dog is not a sandwich, it is a hot dog. I will not elaborate. And finally, we have a set of admittedly very creative questions from Alicorn114. Number one, what is the absolute worst food you've eaten? Okay, so I have kind of a funny story about this. I guess this will go with the funniest moment of my life question from earlier that I couldn't answer. So one time when I was a kid, our library was doing some kind of special event. I don't even remember what it was about. They brought some dried seaweed or kelp or something for the kids to try. I was so excited because I was obsessed with mermaids at the time and I was going to pretend like I was eating mermaid food. So I took one giant bite and basically triggered the most visceral gag reflex I've ever had. It tasted like salty dirt. That's the best way I can think to describe it. I know that's not as interesting as something outlandish like, I, I don't know, escargot, cow tongue. But still, like, that flavor haunts my nightmares. Number two, least favorite number. I've never, I've, ad I've never thought about it. I guess, I guess the devil's number because I am a good Christian girl. Number three, third favorite animal. You know what? I don't even know what my first favorite is. You know, unless you count dragons. Unless you count, if you count dragons, it's dragons. But other than that, I don't know. It's like a three-way tie between lizards, bats, and foxes. So, you know, I, one of those three, I guess, is my third favorite. And also one of them is my most favorite. I don't know. And with that, we come to the end of the list of questions. Thank you so much for this response and for watching this video. I didn't get around to every question. I think I missed one or two, but I did answer at least one from everybody and I did try to answer the majority. The few I left out, it was because I genuinely just didn't have an interesting answer. But just know that I did see them and I do appreciate them. I genuinely didn't expect this kind of response. Thank you so much for your interest and for your support, and thank you again for watching, and I hope you all have a great day.